Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's finally here, season three, episode one of Training for A. Right, let's roll the intro, let's go. So welcome back to the channel everybody. It's really great of you to join me on this most ambitious project of mine to try and improve on my Valencia PB from last year and seeing how close we can get to that magic 220 mark for the marathon. It's hugely exciting. Um, what I managed to do in Valencia running 225 was kind of beyond my wildest expectations when I started running. So now the opportunity to build on that, to go forward and see can we get nearer 220? It really would be like the most amazing thing. And yeah, this is yeah, this is all about that journey following along. 220 for the marathon, 319 kilometer pace or 520 miling for 26 miles, 42k. To put that into perspective, if you've ever done a park run, that's 1634 for the park run eight and a bit times. So yeah, it's uh, obviously a super ambitious goal, but that's what I'm here for. I really want to push my body to see how far we can go. So in terms of goal races, I know a lot of you have seen out there, I've put out there that I'm doing Berlin Marathon and I am entered into Berlin. I've got the flights booked, the hotels booked, everything is booked, but I've also entered Frankfurt Marathon as well, which is actually four weeks later. And I think that is gonna suit this whole sort of series of my goals a little bit better. So this early in the stage, we're 11 weeks out from Berlin or 15 weeks out from Frankfurt. I haven't really decided yet. I'm just kind of knuckling down into my training and see how far we can get. If I did manage to achieve these goals, then based on last year, only nine men in the UK ran under 220 for the marathon. I'm not really thinking that's possible to run under 220, but yeah, the likes of Mo Farah, Mo Farah um, and co and things. Yeah, so nine people. I was 39th in the UK last year, so that's kind of the amount that I'm trying to sort of step up and improve at the moment. So yeah, this video is all about gonna document my training. I'm actually three weeks into training at the moment. The first week uh, was about 142K, uh, which included the Mont Blanc Marathon. So hopefully you saw that video a few weeks ago. Um, last week, we managed to hit the 161Ks, 100 miles, and this week should be fairly easy to hit the 161 as well. So yeah, training started really well at the moment, legs feeling good. And yeah, this video is basically gonna be all about where I am, setting the scene, what are we gonna do differently? Hopefully you're gonna get a few tips and things out of this. But so we're gonna split this video up into four sections. So the first one, I'm gonna be talking about some recent uh, physiological testing that I've been doing. Then I need your input because I need, uh, we're gonna put a little bit of a Q&A out there uh, for one of the upcoming videos. And then, yeah, the third thing, I'm gonna talk about some changes I'm making to my form and sort of efficiency and that sort of thing and some help I'm getting in that, that department. And then sort of two um, things that I'm trying to change as well in part of my training. So that's all coming up. So let's get stuck in to the first thing, which is the physiological testing. So before I started this training block, I really needed to get my exact sort of training zones for sort of pace and heart rate intensity. Um, just so I know that I'm always training, you know, at the right sort of level and, and intensity for all the training that we do. So the only way that, the only sort of gold standard way as such you can do that is to go to a science lab and get them tested properly. So I went down to St. Mary's University, um, at their sort of, their very good sports university here in London and they do all, all these sorts of lactate threshold tests and VO2 max tests. So to take you through roughly what happened um, on the day, um, yeah, we just sort of did a little sort of quick warm up um, on the treadmill. And then, yeah, then we kind of get into the test from there. So um, you start out running at a relatively sort of low level, intent, low level pace. So for me, that was about 13K an hour, I think it was. And then every three minutes or so, you jump off the treadmill um, the person in the lab then takes a blood sample, which is, when you're running is normally from your ear. Um, and then from that, they can measure the amount of blood lactate, um, that sort of the lactate that's sort of building up in your blood. And then every sort of three minutes or so, the treadmill then speeds up by an extra K an hour. Um, so the, yeah, the intensity is rising and the amount of 
the sort of lactate in your blood is rising. And then you know, when you get all the results and stuff back, you see um, there's certain sort of trigger points where the lactate will jump. Um, and then, yeah, from that, you can then start to build your training zones once you sort of see how you know, your body's adapting to running at different paces. So for me, I progressed um, from easy into this sort of steady state zone at around about 345k pace. Um, uh, yeah, so that's kind of where my sort of easy zone as such would end as such. So I can run, I don't do that much running at that sort of intensity, but I can run up to about 345k pace as an easy run. And yeah, then that sort of, we move into the steady state zone, um, which is where we kind of will be doing a lot of our sort of marathon running. Um, and that um, sort of tops out at 326k pace. Um, which is 225 marathon pace. So that's kind of where my fitness was at going into this test, and which is quite encouraging because I haven't really been doing any speed work whatsoever for the first start of the year. So the next point you're looking at for is when you get that real sort of sudden and sustained increase in blood lactate, um, which is where, that ana where your anaerobic energy system kicks in. Um, this is kind of the zone where a lot of people might call their half marathon pace or sort of tempo pace, about the maximum limit you can run for sort of a sustained uh, period of time, uh, which for me was about 314k pace or 513 miling uh, with a heart rate of about 181. And that kind of makes sense to me. I can, I can bizarrely hold a, heart, a very high heart rate for quite a long time. Um, I think I saw that at the Dorney Half Marathon where the heart rate was about over 180 for the whole race. So that, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, for where that sort of, where our sort of threshold zone is basically. So next on the list was to do the VO2 max test. Um, the VO2 max um, as a figure by itself is not the most important thing in endurance uh, running, despite what a lot of people will tell you and what our Garmin's love to tell us as well. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean a quick run at all. There's so many other variables that come into um, sort of endurance distance running. But what you do really want to know is your VVO2 max score, which for me was 19.9. And then from that, you can then get your interval pace, inter your interval paces set up, which for me was between 3K pace and 313K pace, or 449 miling and 511 miling. Um, and yeah, from if you're doing sort of K reps and things like that, that's a really good sort of interval pace to be, yeah, to do all that of those sort of reps in there. So from, yeah, from the lactate threshold and then from that VO2 max test, we can then build this chart, which I put on the screen now, and it gives you all of your exact sort of pacing and heart rate data there. So what does that mean for me? Well, my easy runs up to 170 beats a minute, that, I'm not gonna lie, that is very high and I'm not gonna be doing many of my easy runs there. But for me, my easy runs will probably all be in the 150, so between 150 and 160. Below that, like recovery runs and things will be basically in the 140s. And then you get into that sort of steady, uh, steady state zone. So yeah, 171 to 175, quite small, narrow things. And I've always find it a lot easier to just run on pace, so 345 to up to marathon pace at 320, of course, a current marathon pace at 326. And then, yeah, that sort of threshold where you can really make some really good sort of endurance improvements. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of longer base reps um, and things in that sort of threshold zone, 176 to 181, um, up at sort of goal marathon pace. Um, and then, yeah, shorter intervals and reps things um, in that sort of three minutes to 313 pace there. So, that, you know, for all the types of runs that you're gonna be doing for your marathon training, or I'm gonna be doing for my marathon training, they will set out perfectly in this graph. And then, yeah, you can use it as that really good foundation to start your training. <laughs> the second part of the video it's over to you basically i've already recorded season uh episode two but for episode three i really want to do um, a quick little q a so if you've got any questions about my training about what i'm up to or you want some help with your training whatever you want to know don't ask me questions about injuries because i can't really help that go and see your physio but yeah a little, little q a that i want to do uh, for the third episode. So yeah, let me know down in the comments, any questions. If you've got nothing, but you see a good question down there, then vote it up. All the ones with the most likes and things will be the questions I'll be answering in the next episode. So yeah, what do you wanna know? Let me know down below. So moving on to the third area that I'm really working uh, 
very closely on for this build up is I'm working with a guy called Shane Benzi, who's a sort of a movement specialist, um, sort of a running form coach. He's basically like the running guru to the stars. He's worked with um, some amazing athletes out there. It's not for me to main drop, name drop, but yeah, go and check Shane Benzi out. I'll link his website down below. So for me, I've got a pretty decent engine inside, but if you can't translate that down onto the road and onto the tarmac and get moving across the ground very, very efficiently, then it's pretty useless. So I really need to be working on improving my stride length. My stride length is very short. My turnover is very high. So I'm really trying to you know, really work on propelling the amount of distance that I can um, get across the ground in each stride. And yeah, it's all about sort of running efficiently, running injury free as well, making sure I'm getting a nice foot solid mid foot strike um, in all of my, yeah, in everything that I'm doing there. So yeah, Shane's um, got me doing lots of sort of exercises and uh, sort of running form techniques to really improve that. And you can make some really big gains here. Um, yeah, to get you from point A to point B as efficiently as possible. Shane is uh, one of the most interesting guys that I've uh, had the pleasure of meeting. And yeah, I think I'm making some really good changes first. A lot of his um, sort of philosophy and things is built around the sort of the fascia system that our body is completely um, covered in. Um, sort of this sort of, obviously not this, but very sort of stretchy uh, fascia that's all over our body and how it can sort of store energy as we move along and sort of release. And it's just about getting your whole sort of body engaged and getting really efficient at moving across the ground and sort of that amount of energy loss or minimize our energy loss as we move along. So I'm hoping to get Shane um, properly onto the channel. Uh, when I go and see him next, we'll take along the cameras again. And yeah, he can give you a bit more information about what we're working on. But yeah, seeing some really good positive um, sort of form things and yeah as you might have seen on some of my recent Strava I'm running at quite a low heart rate for a relatively brisk pace as well and a lot of that is just from coming from moving across the ground as efficiently as possible and putting these sort of drills and things into practice and yeah. finally the last thing that I'm sort of the last sort of big thing I'm working on there are lots of little things that we're going to be talking about uh, in upcoming weeks is um, really putting in some extra long runs not necessarily over distance runs but in my last sort of Valencia block, the longest sort of runs were about 30 to 32K. So I'm gonna take those up to around about 40K uh, for some really sort of the key long runs with big sort of blocks at marathon pace mixed into that. Just from what I've been seeing and a lot of the guys um, that are running these sort of very uh, sort of elite times, these long runs are really form, or very long runs are really forming a big sort of key part of their training. So. By putting that super long run in there, it takes a little bit of the pressure off in the week, so I can have some very sort of lighter days in the week, almost <laughs> some rest days maybe. Um, yeah, but when you're trying to build up to 100 miles every single week for like 15 weeks, then that sort of takes the pressure off. Just trying to spread the load a little bit better throughout the week. So there we have it guys. As I say, this first video is a little bit of an odd one because uh, most of the time we'll be out running and having a chat, but I just wanted to set the scene for where we're at now, what we're trying to work towards, where we're going and what all of the goals are. So I hope you've got that out of the video. And also those sort of little sort of key points that I'm working on um, that are coming up. So yeah, in upcoming videos, we'll talk about all sorts of diet, massages. Um, yeah, let me know. What do you want to hear about in my training um, as we go through it? Um, yeah, by all means, drop me a follow on Strava. You can see all of my training. Nothing's private. I put absolutely everything up there. The good, the bad, the ugly, whatever. It all goes on Strava and yeah, Instagram as well. Uh, give me a follow if you don't follow on there already. All that, all that leaves me is to say thanks very much for watching. Subscribe if you don't already subscribe. These, I'm gonna ho hopefully get new training videos out there every single week, um, hopefully twice a week in the build up to Berlin. So yeah, follow the series. Um, get your hats and support the channel. Um, we're going to have some new hats that are be shipping out. So the next batch is coming in in the next couple of weeks. So get your orders in now and then you can, you can be training and some of these amazing hats are coming up um, through the summer ones. Really cool, lightweight. I love them. And yeah, it help, really helps support the channel as well. And so yeah, that's it. We're going to wrap this video up now. As, as you guys, thank you so much for supporting. Let me know what's going on in your journey. I hope you're having a good week and I'll see you in the next one.